Good morning and welcome to Urban Farm It's Classroom. Today we're in central Canterbury and we're going to show you how to grow oyster mushrooms using the bucket grow method. Mushroom bucket grows is a fantastic method for hobbyists and professionals alike. It really boosts your productivity. Many of you would have tried a mushroom growing kit using bags, and this really is the next level. Not only do you have a greater amount of substrate to grow from, it's also a larger container, and it's also reusable, so it's more sustainable both environmentally and economically. All round, brilliant method for use in an urban environment. As I'd said, today we're using growing oyster mushrooms. We've chosen the white oyster. It's coded 2125 on our website. This is a brilliant, hardy, a mushroom with a clean white colour and a beautiful taste. The most important thing for me though is that it's a really fast grower and that's important for combating uh, issues such as contamination. What are we growing it on? Well we're going to grow it on our age-old favourite chopped straw and as I mentioned before we're going to chuck it in this bucket and see how we get on. As we're only looking to pasteurise our substrate, what we're going to do is bring it up to the boil and then flick it off. Then we're just going to allow it to cool down naturally. This is really, really important. Your substrate must be below 30 degrees, i.e. cool to the touch. Otherwise, you risk killing off your spawn before you've even started. Following cooling, we're then going to drain it out and we're ready for the next step. Although we've chosen to use a bucket for our grow, in reality you can use just about any container capable of holding wet straw. Whether that be a milk carton or a drinks bottle, it'll all work exactly the same and use the same principles. What we've done here is drilled some holes in the side of the bucket and in time this is where the mushrooms will grow from. We've used an 8mm drill bit, although you can get away with far smaller. It's not really the case with oyster mushrooms that the bigger the hole, the bigger the mushroom, or even that the more holes, the more mushrooms. As I say, we're using an eight mil hole here, and we've just gone and tried to drill a diamond pattern all the way around the outside at regular intervals. It's also worth noting that we've put drain holes along the bottom. Now this is really important. If your liquid is unable to drain away, you massively increase your chance of developing mould and rot, and that will negatively impact your grow. Having gone to the effort of pasteurising our straw, next step is to make sure our bucket is really clean inside so that we introduce it into the correct environment. There's a few different ways you can do this. I've chosen just to use some isopropyl alcohol spray. It's really easy and quick. Give it a good spray inside, and then a quick wipe and that's job done. However, you could also just run some boiling water through it, same as the straw. Both will give you the same effect and both will get you going. So what I'm doing here is the fun bit, it's the inoculation, it's the bit that gets messy, you know, it's my favorite bit. And uh, what I'm literally gonna do is just layer in straw and spawn in the lasagna method. If you checked out our uh, mushroom bed grow video, you'll know what I'm on about. But you could also just get in and mix it all in evenly throughout. As you know, the main thing is just that you get a good healthy amount of spawning and that it's evenly distributed so that the mycelium can knit and form properly. If you wanted to get super accurate, then you could, you could weigh your spawn and you'd probably want to use a mix rate of between five and 10%. So for every 100 grams of substrate, use five to 10 grams of spawn. So just like the Italian dish, the lasagna method involves putting layers of straw and spawn one on top of the other progressively until you reach the top of the bucket. Each layer of substrate probably wants to be around one to two inches thick and it's really important that as you're going along you can press it down. That'll allow the mycelium to knit much faster and it'll get you growing that bit quicker. So we've lasagnaed our way right to the top. That's it, job done. Now remember that with all types of mushroom farming, what you're trying to do is replicate what goes on in the natural environment. So although it isn't entirely necessary, what I like to do with my bucket grows is put them inside of a waterproof liner.
This is really good because it stops the turnover of air, so your CO2 stays high, it keeps it lovely and warm, and it also maintains the humidity, so there's no risk of drying out. What we're gonna do now, take this inside, find a nice quiet little cupboard, and we're gonna leave it there for around about two to three weeks to let the mycelium develop. The ideal temperature for this is around 20 to 23 degrees, so you certainly don't want to put it into an airing cupboard or next to any other heat source. Remember, consistency is key. So here we are a few weeks later and we're ready to move on to the next stage. But before we do that, it's really important that we check our mycelium and make sure that it's run through the straw correctly and it's good, strong and absorb plenty of nutrients ready for growth. But what are we looking for? The first thing is that it should be thick and white throughout the whole of the substrate and that, you also, and that there's also no extra contamination, uh, moulds or anything like that. If you did find moulds, you may wish to try and gently remove them. However, this can often result in damage to the mycelium and sometimes you're better off to just push through. Once we're happy that our mycelium is mature, then we need to choose the right place for the fruiting stage. And there's several important things that you need to consider for this. One is light, two is temperature, three, humidity, and four, you need to have it somewhere that's easy to access and that you're gonna to remember to care for. So what you're looking for is an area that has ambient, so indirect sunlight, somewhere that has a slight change in temperature to where you are incubating, as this can be a trigger for growth. And you're also looking for somewhere that you can regulate the humidity. We've chosen to do it in the bath because it's very easy for us to, to spray and add water without causing any other issues. It's important to remember in mushroom cultivation that what we're trying to do is replicate what happens in the natural environment. So when you move um, a grow from incubation into fruiting with wood loving lignocolus mushrooms like these, what we're replicating is the stage where mycelium has burrowed through the log it's harnessed all of the nutrients and it then reaches the edge of the log. When that happens, there is all of a sudden um, light available, more oxygen and a change in temperature. So once we've selected our place to carry out fruiting, we need to think a little about, a bit about how to actually care for it during the process. The main thing is just to stop the bucket from drying out, stop the mycelium from drying out. If you can do that and maintain a little bit of ambient humidity, you can't go far wrong. So, you, to do that, we're gonna place it into the bath and spray the whole area twice daily with a water spray bottle. Some of the more high-tech guys might use a humidifier, but I've found that for easy urban growing, a spray bottle is just fine. Once the primordia and then the pins start to form, i.e. the baby mushrooms, it's really important that you don't spray them directly. You can continue to spray the bucket and all of the surrounding area, but do not spray the mushrooms as they're growing themselves. Hopefully, two, three, two, three, four weeks later, you'll be harvesting your first grow.